Hello and welcome to the channel. This is a Fender Supersonic 22. This amplifier is in, I suspect, capacitors, judging by the noise it's making when we plug it in. So let's just have a bit of a look at it. So we've got volume, treble and bass, because we've got one channel there. Let's just see if we can uh, zoom in a bit on it. So we've got volume, treble, bass, on the first channel then the second channel you can see we've got gain one gain two uh, treble bass middle volume and a reverb so pretty simple design on there one input so let's turn it around and have a look at the back so if we look at the back there you can see we've got the usual thing power socket fuses on off and standby and then we've got we've got the internal and external speakers we've got a foot switch uh, that's not in with this but it doesn't matter we don't need the foot switch to repair it and then we've got effect send and return on there as well usual deal 26v6 <laughs> sorry 26l6s and i'm not sure what other tubes we've got in there i can see a couple so we need to open this up and have a look. One of the reasons is because I need to find out what caps we need for this. Because although I've got a schematic for it, I'm not sure whether the radials or axials or a mixture of both. So let's crack this open and have a look inside. Right, I've got it out of the case. And uh, we'll have a look at what we've got here. So we have... A nice chunky power transformer you can see there just hone in output transformer a couple of small transformers i imagine at least one of those is for the reverb that i think could be a choke you know i think that is a choke and then we've got let's have a look at the tubes that we've got then see what that is they're all jj's these tubes that's ecc81 We've got in there 1287. We've got in this one. Oh, they're good sockets. ECC 83, 1287. We've got in here. Ah, that is ECC 81, 1287. So that'll probably be something to do with the reverb. And then I think these two are 12 AX7s, ECC 83s. Yep. That's that one. Ooh. There we go. And the same with that one. Again. Yep, ECC 83. 12x7. Right, so let's tip it over. Yes. So it's the dreaded IC capacitors that we've got in here. The dreaded. And you can see that uh, getting this board out is not going to be particularly fun. And then we've got three more there radials. They're on a separate board. So it, it, it's whether we're going to replace the one capacitor or whether or not we're going to do a full recap on this amp. Once this board comes out, really here, it's probably as well to replace this one, this one, and this one here, which is on the bias section here, along with those two. I presume that's what that's for. Just looking at that, that is only speculation. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this amplifier in on the Variac, and we're going to bring it up gently and just have a bit of a listen as to what is wrong. So here's a power cable that I prepared earlier. I'm going to put that in there and uh, run in a little bit of power. Let's see if we've got the switches on, shall we? First of all, yes, we have. That's good. Right, let's have a listen. I'll switch there. Now I'm just going to put about 120 volts on this and I reckon that it'll run at that and we're not going to put any more on it. Sorry about the camera there. So we've got 120 volts. 
there we go you can just begin to hear it come up now there right so we'll switch off now what i'm going to do is a little test on this because my money is on that first capacitor that black ic capacitor you can see there my money's on that and i've got a very nice f and t 47 microfarad at 500 volts and i've got a couple of jumpers on it and i'm going to jumper across that don't try this at home <laughs> but we're going to jumper across it and see if that gets rid of it gets rid of the dreaded bez what if we put that on there like so right we're checking that now if we switch on just wait for it to warm up there we go and it's silent I've got a little bit of uh, oh I think that's the capacitor trying to break through there but yeah so we know it's that but little test there we'll turn it off so remember if you do try that trick remember that the capacitor will still be charged when uh, when you remove it and you need to discharge the capacitor otherwise you may find yourself getting a little nip off it but it will only be a small nip that one's actually discharged itself as the current's drained out the amplifier so we know we now know what's wrong with this this amplifier so now i'm looking at how we're going to take this board out and i'm going to disconnect the power even though the variax off So you tend to look at these boards and look at the run of the cables and that will give you some idea of how this board is going to come out. So all the cables are running this this way and, and they're into thick clusters. So what is actually holding this board in cable wise? We've obviously we've got no cables from this end because it's at the end of the amplifier. So the only three I can see are we've got to, is the ground is onto that onto the um, kettle lead socket there the IEC so we take those off all three and the fuse holder also looks like and we can either take that off from the fuse holder or P1 there is and then there's another one here and I think then that we take the screws out this board should fold back and we can change these capacitors so change this one while we're in here we'll change this other power capacitor and possibly look at, at these others that's a 22 don't know if I've got any 22s I have a 30, but I don't, I'll have to have a look. We may have to order one of those, unless, what's these? What have we got here? They're 47s. I don't know if we've got any 22s in Vichy's. What's in there? Ah, yes. We have indeed. So an F and T and a Vichy. Is that 500 volts, though? No, it's only 450. So I'm afraid that's no good. We need 500 volts. So I either have to put, I think I've got a 30 that would go, a 30 would be okay in there. Let's have a look, what's that one? That's a 30 at 500. There we go. So we could put that in. 30 is defined there. So there we are. That, um, that tells us what's wrong with this amplifier. That little test. So now we've got to get that board out. Now, moving on to these, obviously we know these IC caps are problematic. It, it's a common thing. It's all, it's, there's plenty of information on the internet. So I'm not going to go into all of that, but we know they're problematic. We've got three more here, radials, which means this board would have to come out. That one, getting that board out, may be a little more difficult. So we're gonna have to look at that. So I'm gonna, have words with the customer and see how far he wants me to go with this amp. Does he just want me to get it running? Well, I've got that board out. It's no big deal to change a few more capacitors on there. 
but taking this board out is a whole new ball game. Right, we've got this board out. It's a bit tricky, but not too bad. So to get this board out, what you need to do is remove the three wires from the IEC main socket. Well, the two wires, I don't remove the third one and then realise you don't have to remove the ground, but uh, it's no biggie. Then you have to get the pilot light, undo the four screws, and then what you have to do is hutch the board back gently and that will give you enough uh, space to release this pilot light which is just overlapping the board uh, which is there obviously just overlapping the board so if you can just ease the board back and then you can pull out your pilot light you can't lift the board up without getting the pilot light out and once you've done that you've got a, a, a bunch of wires here tie wrapped and you just clip off the tie wrap and you've got to clip that off anyway if you're going to change the 22 under there which we are and we are a bit a bit tight on here so we could probably clip off this tie wrap um although i don't think they're connected to the others so but you can lift lift the board at that point if you just if you're really careful one of the tie wraps that's that's causing a bit of a problem actually is that one on there so that's that's freed that and that'll come back a bit easier so you can clip clip that other one off there just to give you a bit more lift and as long as you don't force this hard you, you'll be fine you really start to force it you may have some problems with it so it's just a matter of gently holding it while you get the change the capacitors so not too bad on that one so take the two terminals off the live and negative off the IEC take the four screws out hutch the board back Get out the pilot light, clip the um, clip this bunch of what the grip tie the tie wrap on this bunch of wires, and probably just that one there that's holding that board just to take the pressure off that board when you're moving the wires, and that gets that out pretty good. We're not going to do this one. I've spoke with a customer. We're going to leave this this board. These won't see as much voltage. It's it, it should be fine. It's always a bit of a gamble with these IC caps, but should I presume they're IC caps? Actually, yeah, they are. Yeah, but should should all be fine. So all we've got to do now is change. We're going to change this one, this twenty-two, and um, I've got a hundred down here. I don't even know really where if I really need to change that one. It's only on the bias, and this amp is ten years old, by the way. It's about ten years old, so these caps have lasted ten years in here. Yeah, they they're not brilliant caps, but to be fair, they've probably lasted ten years. Is uh, and this amp has been gigged a little bit, so that's probably it's. Yeah, you'd expect them to last maybe another five five years or so longer than that, but. It's not too bad, is it? Ten years. It's not like he's had it for six months and they've popped. So, so we'll see how we go with that. Then we'll get the uh, soldering iron warmed up and uh, we'll uh, we'll remove them. Right, we've got the caps in. I've got the board back in. I've just got to put a bit of hot glue around them just to make sure they held in place. So, a couple of things that you need to, if you're going to attempt this, a couple of things you need to remember when you take these capacitors out. That they're sat on glue and you've got to get that glue off so only use alcohol based products to get that off that leave no residue on the board and this is the stuff that I use just get that in shot you can see it there let's pull the camera back so you can see it that's the stuff I use it leaves no residue on these boards that's the last thing you want to be doing we don't want these boards getting conductive over time and if they've got a residue on then dirt and all sorts of things build up on there so that's the first thing now this capacitor the second one when you are cleaning off the glue on that one you need to be extra careful because there is two tracks uh, on top of the board running underneath that capacitor so if you're going at it with a screwdriver and go through the tracks you'll have shot it so you need to be careful i soaked it in the alcohol 
and just prized it off with my fingernail and then just rubbed it with a cloth till I got most of it off well nearly all of it off you need to get 99% of it off or you won't get you won't get your cap seated properly and the just the other thing is that I also had to take off two more wires which is P18 which is that one and D40 which if we just you can see him in there he's got buried in there somewhere oh, he's coming out the top there he is come here yep yeah, so d40 goes on there sorry p9 oh no that's p19 and where did i get d40 from i'm looking at that diode there dear oh dear yeah so if we just just ease that over then you'll be able to see it so you can see those two there we've got d40 which is not D40, I've just said that again. It is P18 and P19. So P19 goes on there, and P18 goes on there, and that's enough about D40. D stands for diode, diode not pin. Right, so that's that. So we just check round, we've got all this on. Now I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go back and check the video footage. And make I know I'm right, but I still go back and check it and make sure we're a hundred percent tie wrap around these, and we wish we're ready to go. So a very fiddly job. One thing to remember if you're doing this is to be very very patient. If you start pulling this board about, if you start pressing on it, forcing it in any shape or form, it will break, and you'll have all sorts of problems. So be very very gentle with it especially you know leaving i mean we could have took all the wires off and everything it would have been a nightmare you've, you've got to sit and list every single wire it's just just a pain so getting it off like that just saved having to uh and as long as you're careful it, it's absolutely fine it's a much it's a much easier way to do it and a much quicker way as well right so we're just bringing this up on the variac now and we've got 239 volts on there but I've only got 131 on the Variac got some interference going on there not sure what that is Just clean those tube sockets. Right, let's go up a bit more. What is that? Just switch off for a moment. Not quite sure what's causing that. That's that output tube. Hmm. We better address that, haven't we? There we go, my word, those are in tight. So that's the, uh, that's the tube that's making the noise. So just a bit of dust in the pins, let's get it back in. That's not good, is it? Is that the tube socket, or is uh, is that the tube? Wow, that's not good. What is wrong with that? So is that what is that what's caused our capacitor to uh, let go? Let's spray some gumption in that, madam. All right, let's try again. 
no, that tube is no good. Or oh, something's not right there with that. Right, I've just put another tube in. Hmm. Need to make sure, 100% sure that that is right before we turn this voltage up. No, it's not, look. Whoa, that is, so what's going on there? So there's a problem with that tube socket and that looks like what's taking that capacitor out. So what is wrong with that? Ruby tube sockets. So I think that tube socket needs changing before we have some more damage. I don't know if I've got any of those in stock, you know. I'll have to check. But that does not seem at all right to me. And this is why you always run them up on a Variac. We've only got 150 volts on there as opposed to the full voltage. So I found a tube socket. It's one that we've used in a project, but it's a nearly new one. So we're going to put this one on. I've just got to wire it up and then we should be good to go, hopefully. Right, well, that's cured that problem. Now I've just measured the filament voltage and the filament voltage is 6.93 volts that's 10 percent over which is borderline 7 volts now so at 240 volts i've got 7 volts on those filaments so that's telling me that this is wired for 230 volts we really need to look at that those tubes it's going to shorten the life of them if they're running you know over 10 percent and seven volts is pushing over that so we need to have a look at that but this amp at least is running now negative 42 on that bias but that's only uh, hmm. so what we need to do now is get some readings off the transformer windings we need to find center tap get some readings um, get the impedance of each side of the transformer and then we need to get the volts drop each side of the transformer and then we need to work out what the bias is on this amplifier in its present state because I think although the tubes look okay but well, I'm guessing that this will be over 70 percent but it might they might have biased it at 70 percent at 230 volts the problem with it is in this country we get above 240 volts sometimes and that, that is the problem with these tubes. They're just, once they go above that 10%, it's not doing those filaments any good at all. 7.07, .07. and that's at, that's at 241 volts. Let's just say it went up to two, 243 volts on the mains, and that's, that's, that's quite normal. When I... What are we at now? Seven point one two. So yeah, that that tells me that there's a problem there with this amp. I've measured the output transformer on either side, and we've got one hundred ninety six point two ohms and one hundred ninety five point eight ohms. So one hundred ninety six. That's pretty well matched. It's a good good matching of transformer there. So what I'm going to do. Before we bias this amp and change over the the voltage as well, we're going to we're going to we're going to check the bias once, and then we obviously we're going to need to rebias it once we've changed the voltage over to 240 from 230. I'm just going to see what hits this capacitor when I switch this this amplifier on. I'm just going to see what what actually hits it before the valves conduct, before the tubes conduct. So. Four hundred and fifty-three volts there, and you can see that's that's quickly coming up there. Four hundred and fifty-three volts hits that at two hundred and thirty volts on the primary. So well within the cap, the capacitor's range. So no no issue there. So the the main issue with this amp is the filaments really. Well, I've just checked the bias on this amp. It is. 
5.26 on one side and 5.13 on the other. So that's incredibly low, incredibly low. Now, the customer has changed the tubes in this amp. So I don't know whether these current these tubes aren't drawing as much current as the others or whether it's just a mixture of the two. So despite the extra voltage on the HT because of the uh, incorrect voltage setting on the primary, this this is the bias on this is not actually an issue at all. And in fact, when we change it to 240, that should go down even lower. But of course, what is what is more not it's not so much a problem because the, the capacitors are within the rating but we've got a much higher HT voltage because we're drawing a lot less current there so this amps not set up right at all and five point what's five five point two watts these tubes are 14 watts remember the six v6s's so they have a dis maximum dissipation of 14 watts so we should have 9.8 at 70 percent on these tubes and we have 40 percent in fact 40 percent is 5.6 so yeah so just just a shade a shade under 40 percent that is very low so this amp will have terrible crossover distortion so what we're going to do now is we're not going to set the bias now. We've got all the voltage readings from the 230 volt tapping. We know the, the filaments are 7 volts. So we'll we'll write our filaments down as, as well. So we know we've got 7 volts on the filaments. So what we're going to do now, we're going to shut down this amplifier. We're going to drain the capacitors to make sure I don't get bitten. And then we're going to look at changing this voltage over from 230 to 240. So if we look on here now, we can see that to uh, get something to point with. Where's my pen gone? We'll use this socket. So if we can see, if we see on here, pins five is white black on 240 and pins four is white. On 230, pin four is white black and pin five is white. So we just need to switch those two wires over. And if we look here, we go in, sorry about that creak in there, that's just the tripod crying out for mercy. So this is pin five and this is white. And if we look again on our on our thing there, we can see pin five is white. So that is 230 volts. So we need to swap pin pins five and pins four. Right, we've set the primary now at 240 volts. So let's have a look at the filaments. Six point, 6.7. So they, they've dropped from 7 volts to 6.7. So they, they're just about within the 5% range. It's probably about 6% over. That's fine. So that, that's good. So we've cured that problem because we didn't want those running at seven volts and over. So the next thing now is to check the bias again and see, see what the bias is. Right, so we've just checked the bias and now it's 4.8 and 4.9, 4.79, so 4.8 watts. They pretty well match those tubes. 4.8 watts, that's all that's biased at and you see the difference in reducing that, uh, that voltage but reducing that voltage by changing over the, the, the correct primary to 240 volts. So what we need to do now is up the bias. So that's the next thing to do. We need to bias this amp up now properly and this amp will be done then. And then we need to see what the voltages are when we've finished. We also need to see what voltage, we, we could have done with seeing what voltage was actually hitting that capacitor when uh, when we switched on but we do know we've got much less ht voltage now so we've got 421 volts there you can see that's that's from plate to ground not from node one to ground plate to ground that's through the transformer there's only three volts difference but it's three volts because i, I re-measured that uh, node one again and it was 424 volts 
So I think this is the bias preset pot over here. And I'm going to uh, turn that up now. We're going to test to see if it is, that is the, I think that is the bias preset pot. But we're going to check and just see if it makes sure it is by test checking the voltage on pin five and see if the negative volts increase because if it's not the bias then we don't want to be twiddling it do we we don't want to be putting it back to where it was before so pin five now i've got negative negative 40 volts now we had negative 42 before so that's not changed a great deal Yep, that's definitely the bias preset pot. So let's not go, go too mad. Let's go to... Where I'll put that. So I've just put that down to negative 38 now. I should have looked on the schematic really. But I don't set bias with negative voltage. It's just... Just a guide. And you can already hear that the volume's come up on this amp already. Right, let's do some more tests and see what we've got now. So negative 38, I've just checked checked the, the bias again. We've got 3.22 volts now on um, on the, the brown. Now, brown and blue is because of the wires that are coming out of the transformer to the plates, as I've named them. So we've got now 3.22, 420 volts plate to ground, and that's given us 6.89 watts. So we've still got a bit to go. Right, so I've just been working on the one side while I've been gradually increasing it. We finished up at 4.67 volts drop across the transformer on the uh, brown side. And we've got 412 of plate volts and I have got it to 9.81. That'll do me. Let's do the other side and see what we've got on the other side. This should be pretty close actually. And on the other side, 9.76. That is a wrap. Right, welcome to the demo of this uh, Fender Supersonic 22 that we've, re we've repaired. So we've done a few bits to this amp. We uh, changed two capacitors that was uh, in the power supply. We changed the tube socket. We changed the primary voltage from 230 to 240. And we biased it up. And this amp sounds most splendiferous. So let's have a listen.
look at this fat switch. <laughs> Have a listen to the other channel. So we flick over there. Now, this amp is quite surprising. I had a little bit of a play around with it last night, and it turns into quite a monster. And if we, you can see it's, it's already beginning to feed back. Thank <laughs> you. 
bit of some a nice bit of gain on there for a fender amp that's unbelievable so this is this quite a tool this amp sounds tremendous so let's just back some of that off now and just see where let's just put about half of <laughs> Let's just see if this will clean up now. Notice it's gone a bit woolly now. I think there's there's miss, the bright caps missing on the volumes. So a bit of a fierce channel that one, rather than um, rather you, know, you you can get it clean, but it's a bit of a struggle. it doesn't sound as nice as the the clean channel itself so we flick back onto there ah, of course the master volume doesn't work on that channel it's just volume treble and bass let's boost up the reverb close to this to be fair just feeding back a little but I am sat right on top of it reverb holds the chords nice so pretty good amplifier really so i think that'll do it for this one 
So that's the Fender Supersonic 22. Was in a bit of a state when it came in. Well, it didn't work at all, did it? It certainly does now, and this amp sounds fantastic. So thanks for watching. And uh, oh, I'd just like to say as well, I am gradually working my way down the comments. We're having a, a, a bit of time off. Um, we've finished up with quite a few comments, so I am working my way through them. I do try to answer all the comments if I can. And if I can't answer the technical questions, then usually Gooden will answer them for me. He's a gem. He's a diamond. So thanks for watching. You all take care, and I'll see you all in another video. Bye-bye for now.